I want to start my first post off with a little bit about me, as it helps in context with the story. I'm a 22-year-old person, working in the medical field. I'm a floater medical technician at the moment, which means I get a schedule every week, going to different assisted living facilities, skilled nursing facilities, independent living facilities, all the living facilities that usually hold a majority of elderly people, and help with the vaccinations and general patient care involving meds all around my state. Sometimes I'm only 30 minutes from home, but I've driven three hours before, and most times they drag on long into the night. Being that I'm not really that picky, and I know how to handle myself and money is money, I usually don't mind the drive. My parents would drive four hours to a location for a day trip, and the same day we would drive back, nothing too crazy, though it can get a little tiring after working six days in a row. Now that you know how I work, I guess I'll tell you about where I live, no names, but I'm basically in the foothills or in the mountains. Lots of back roads, lots of trees. I know, typical of scary stories, the middle of nowhere with spooky trees. But once again, I don't think much of it. I've lived around forests all my life. I see them as peaceful rather than scary. So I finish up this particular clinic at around 6pm. And as you know, if you live up in the north in the winter, it's dark by then. But once again, I'm thinking nothing of it. But even so, I'm tired and hungry and ready to go to bed. My team calls it a day and I set up to take my hour and 45 minute drive home. The first 30 minutes I'm in town, then on a highway. So pretty nice, smooth sailing, listening to lo-fi music as per usual. Using it as my decompress and meditative time. I keep driving, then I notice a huge crash up ahead, like a 4 or 5 car pile up, real nasty on this busy highway. So I take an exit off the highway, going to drive around it so I can get home and into my bed quicker, rather than sit and wait for them to clear a path from one of the lanes. Anyway, I start driving through this town that honestly looks like maybe three freaking people live in it. All the buildings are run down, the road is so messed up, it's awful. My car's poor tires and hydraulic system were begging for me to stop, so I had to slow down a lot as to not stress my car. It's dark and really old, but again, places like this exist, a town on its last breath. I've seen them more than a few times, from living up and down the east coast in less than shitty neighborhoods. I'm not going to judge, but I will note this place is just really, really empty. No cars, no lights, boarded up houses, just empty. I'm driving between 15 and 20 miles an hour, my bright's on so I can see. It's a clear night, so I have that going for me. As I'm driving past this big fire department overrun with bare trees, a loud thunk comes from the roof of my car. Great. I quickly pull over into the parking lot of the abandoned fire department. Wonderful, I'm thinking. Get sideswiped by a random dude at a rest stop and dent the top of my poor orange berry in one week. I open the door in a panic, expecting to see some tree branch denting my roof, but nope, nothing. Which is weird enough as is. I'm like, what the hell? I knew something hit my roof. So I go to check behind my car, maybe it rolled off. Maybe it was a bird or a bat that fell then flew away. There's a lot of trees around here. I walk all around my car, look into the messed up road, but nothing. I chalk it up to the winged animal idea and climb back into my car, a little rattled. So it's silent as I get resituated. That's when I heard this ear piercing shriek. I'm talking, someone is screaming so loud it sounds like their vocal cords could break. I lock my door and start getting back on the road. Calm down, I'm thinking. Bobcats are everywhere. You've heard what they sound like plenty, like a woman crying bloody murder. It's just a bobcat. It's just a bobcat. My hands are shaking, and I'm trying to drive out of there as fast as I can. Just a bobcat. Some kids playing a prank. Some homeless tweaker. My car was rattling back and forth as I got up to a comfortable 35 miles an hour. Of course, that's me pushing it for my abused car. I'd make it up to him later with a nice wash. I drive another mile through this town, and I'm a few miles from the exit to the highway again. I'm mentally kicking myself for being so scared, like a little pansy. I'm freaking out over some animals. <laughs> I'm a while away, no thanks to the helpful, yet very beat up and weathered signs. I'm calming down. Nothing crazy. Maybe it would be a good idea to play my lo-fi again, as I pause that 24-7 livestream, one from YouTube when I got out of my car. Just as I reach for my phone in the passenger seat, something rushes past my headlights. I scream and break hard. I don't know why. It was yards away from me, in the very distant part of my headlights. Alright, that's the final straw. I'm crying at this point, shaking so hard I can barely grip the wheel. Eyes blurry with tears. 
I don't care about the music anymore, and even though I'm still reminding myself, animals inhabit tree-dense abandoned towns all the time, the situation was still enough to get me crying. I keep driving, trying to focus on getting to that damn highway, but that's when I see it. If it's a human, then it's not like any human I've seen before on the side of the road, seeming to stand so politely on the sidewalk, as if waiting for me to pass it so it could cross the street was this tall thing. It had sunken facial features and looked naked, loose skin, a lot of it, sagging down its legs and arms, piling at the wrists, ankles, and knees, around its neck and hanging from its jaws. I saw it for half a second before I slammed my foot down on the gas. Sorry, Orangeberry, like I said, I'd make it up to you. I'm screaming obscenities now. Fuck this, fuck that, what the fuck, what the fuck? You get the idea. My onslaught of emotions being too much. Goosebumps covered me from head to toe, tears rolling down my face, hands gripping my steering wheel so tight there's nail marks in it. I swerve onto the highway and recklessly into the other lane. I drive at 80 for a little bit before eventually slowing down and pulling over to the side of the road to sob and call my dad. He picks up instantly, and when he hears me crying, he's all concerned, trying to get my story. I explain everything. I called it a man in some scary monster costume. My dad instructed me to call the police, which I didn't really want to do. I was already a nervous wreck, having to explain it or even go back with somebody. Absolutely, F that. But my dad insisted, so I called the cops. I tell them I saw a man in the town back there off the exit, in a costume. He scared me really bad. And after a few more questions, the cops said they'd check it out, and sent me away. No, I can't be sure it wasn't a costume. No, I can't be sure it wasn't some weird outfit and bad lighting at night. No, I'm not saying all these events were connected in some way. But what I am saying is, it all happened so quick, it was hard to dismiss as nothing. And if this was a costume, it had to be a damn good costume, because it was super hyper-realistic, and I saw every single fold and wrinkle and could even make out a couple blue veins. I don't even remember the name of the town. I haven't gotten a call back from the police about any updates. If there was anyone found with a costume on, stalking the side of the road in a beat-up town at 7pm, I don't even remember the name of the town. I haven't got a call back from the police about any updates. If there was anyone found with a costume on, stalking the side of the road in a beat-up town at 7pm. It happened about a month ago, and I'm better now. As long as I'm in my car, I'm safe, but I no longer feel safe being outside of my car at night. Not even the short walk from my front door to my driveway is safe anymore. I'll start shaking and panting if I'm outside in the dark alone for more than five seconds. I don't know who to tell or what to believe, but at the very least, I hope you guys found it entertaining. Here's a few odd encounters I've had. Please tell me what you think they were and are, and your thoughts on them. All occurrences happened near the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. As a child, I used to be really interested in the supernatural. I constantly read about werewolves and vampires, but not about other cryptids such as skinwalkers and wendigo until recently. I grew up on a farm surrounded by woods. The first encounter I had with something unsettling would be during a sleepover I had with two of my friends. After a riveting day running through the woods and having fun, we settled down for bed. It was a full moon and the light pierced through the blinds. My two friends, let's call them A and A, were sleeping on the bottom bunk while I slept on the top. They had fallen asleep, but I was unable to, so I decided to peek through the blinds. The full moon stared at me, and I looked away for a second. But when I looked back, there was a creature. The head was shaped similar to that of a horse with glowing red eyes and shaggy, thick, dark brown hair. It was about two feet lower down than me, right outside my window, about eye level. The window was about six feet off the ground. The bunk bed was also about six feet, so this creature must have been nine feet tall. I don't know what it was, but it certainly scared me. Here is part two of my story. My best friend C and my other best friend at the time, K, and I were all having a sleepover together outside in a tent. In our tent, we had one light, a small battery-operated lantern. It was dark and quiet outside when all of a sudden, a stick was hurled at our tent. My friend C felt that we were in danger, but did not know from what. C had just moved from Arizona, near the Navajo Reservation, and had recently experienced a skinwalker herself. We had no way to defend ourselves, so we decided to attempt to grab something that could be used as a defense from our car near the tent. C decided to be the one to go and grab it. As she went towards the car, she screamed. She immediately sprinted back with fear in her eyes. We asked her what happened, and she told us about a large figure with glowing red eyes resembling a wolf. 
we ended up leaving that tent for good later on. This is part three. As an avid trail runner, I am used to the woods in which I run. I tend to run near dusk as the sun is settling down, but I refuse to run when it's dark. I feel at home in the forest. I've never feared it, not until now. Only recently did I experience three odd phenomena. I began to feel like I was being watched while I ran. Yes, I know the forest is always watching, with all of its animals watching what I'm doing, but this feeling is different. It's more of a fear-inducing feeling. And then about four days after this began, I saw these glowing orbs. Only a couple, but they led deeper and deeper into the woods. All of this led towards a place my father and I found when I was young, where a deer's ribcage was stuck in the hollow of a tree, almost as if it was put there purposefully. There is also a big mound of rocks near it. Those rocks were not just randomly placed, they form a large rectangular-like shape, similar to a grave. I haven't seen the orb since, but it was unsettling. By far the most unsettling thing that has happened would be the amount of times I felt like someone was following me or chasing me in the woods. I've even had a gut feeling something was trying to lure me deeper into the woods. Whenever I feel that something is so off and there is malicious intent, I turn around and go back. The feeling of dread has only gotten stronger, and I'm wondering what might be causing it.